we're going to roll right into it. I'd like to bring in Austin Baker from Secure Ends. Um, so if you think about our storyline, um, so we've talked about, you know, multi-factor single sign-on and the power of identity. We've kind of um, followed that hacking attempt into the privileged identity. And now we're going to talk about that full cycle governance, um, you know, the whole life cycle of that identity. And I think there's some important points here. Um, you know, that Austin's going to cover to make sure that you really are telling or implementing that full-blown identity solution from end to end. Um, so Austin, with that, welcome. I'll allow you to uh, give a brief introduction and I'll let you get going. Thank you, Johnny. Yeah, so thank you again. Uh, we really appreciate being here. It's, uh, you know, it's an honor and privilege. I know that it's uh, with a lot of remote work, you know, there's a lot of uh, extra workload, it seems, uh, on a lot of people's front. So Appreciate you taking the time to sit uh, through this and, and listen to you know some of these modern solutions that Alchemy is presenting. So, uh, yeah. So my name is Austin. I um, lead our sales and strategic partnerships initiatives here at Securians, and I want to start off by saying that the reason why Securians exists is to disrupt the perception of in the market of an IGA solution, and so we're doing that in a few different ways. So really, three main ways is is the first, just how we think about time to value. When we were doing research in the market, we were uh, talking with customers, resellers, and technology partners of you know, traditional IGA solutions. And one of the biggest things we saw was uh, implementations were not being properly outlined and expectations were not being met. And then people were not realizing the ROI on those large investments. So we wanted to not be so much a consulting company, but provide a product that was going to be extremely valuable for our customers that could be stood up quickly and then easily, easily utilized. And so that's really our second piece is the utilization strategy. So we don't want our customers to be required to have to go through an extensive training or get a certification in order to utilize this or have an engineering background for that matter to utilize the product. Um, we wanted to use, you know, the most modern technology for our UI perspective using React.js and, you know, something that really kind of will guide you along the way. And then lastly, our agility. So time to value is one thing, but agility from a not only a customer service standpoint, but also just how we think about, you know, adoption. So how do we stand it up? How do we, you know, we've learned from thousands of organizations uh, of all the crazy ways that people are handling uh, access certification which is the core of who we are. And so we've learned what works and, and what's going to streamline that process. And so trying to, uh, you know, mold that adoption strategy, but also, you know, from, like I said, the implementation. So how do we do this from an, an agile minor, manner and then configurations as the companies that we work with continue to grow and evolve uh, into this, you know, modern, strategy for identity access management. And so if you look at the modules that we offer within the Securance platform, the first one is, you know, the most most recent one rolled out is the, the cloud identity management. So being able to connect to and extract data directly from our users cloud environment so that we can see who has access to what, the granular access. And Apart from that is also the access control, so access requests. So we'll talk about this more towards the end, uh, but allowing users or say managers on behalf of their users to be able to go into Securance and request access to connected, maybe SSO applications and disconnected applications and have an approval workflow that is generated so that all of that is tracked and then say pushed into Okta, for instance, as an example, to do the provisioning or have an automated ticketing workflow for uh, changes that need to be made that can all be tracked and reported. So the second, this last piece here, so the access certification. So that is, again, the core of who we are, rethinking how we do access certification uh, as a whole, how we consume data, match users, uh, communicate with reviewers, and then generate the audit reports and then identity risk and analytics. So this is a bit of fun, uh, a, a fun module that a lot of organizations are utilizing. And it's um, a question that I, I get asked a lot is, hey, we don't know. You know, it's so unorganized. We've been doing it this way for so many years. If uh, you know they're an older company and 
who should have access to it? How do we manage that? And so what this identity risk and analytics does is actually pulls all of the data from the connected and disconnected applications and provides that information for you. So it shows you of all the groups and the peers of people who have similar attributes, driving these attributes of maybe it's a job title, department, location, people who have these similar attributes, where are our outliers? Where are the people that have something that may be different from their peers? And so the reason we're able to increase the time to value and uh, you know be agile and have a you know a utilization strategy is the technology itself you know so our company is like i said we've built this on aws it was born in the cloud so it's just a, a large thing it was built in a docker container so it can deploy be deployed in someone else's environment as well and it's all you know api driven uh, java spring Boot, and we like i said want to change the way we're thinking about an edge iga solution and we really are going to be working through a process this a handful of simple steps so the first step is to consume the data so from connected disconnected apps uh, or endpoints and you'll notice on the next slide that i'm going to walk through that we think of this differently and the end goal is the same to get the data end in the actual platform that we're going to be reviewing and reporting with uh, and so there's different routes that we can take now, after that, we're going to match all of the users across all of the endpoints so that we can see in one place. I hate to use a, a single pane of glass as a you know cliche thing, but we can see a single pane of glass of what does Chase have access to today? I want to see no matter what their user ID, their, their credential, how they're accessing these endpoints. I want to see all of my endpoints and what this user has access to. And then AIML, like I said, is going to immediately highlight those outliers. What's different? Are there any, is there anyone that's inactive within my organization that has access to something? So being able to see that, eliminate those orphan accounts, and then have a full, to Johnny's point, have a full access governance solution that manages the end-to-end -end life cycle of, you know, seeing who has access to what and, you know, staying compliant and having operational efficiencies around the whole process. So this is how it works. This is probably the oldest slide and and so the secure ends deck that is tried and true. And what we do first is we will actually pull from a system of record, could be the HRAS system, could be Okta, maybe Active Directory or an ERP system, could be a combination. If maybe I have customers that have, you know, all of our contractors are just stored in this Excel file, that's fine. So you can have as many systems of record as needed. And all that's gonna be combined and pulled into secure ends as a unified people list. So we see all of the users within our organization. The second thing is we will be pulling from all of the endpoints that are gonna be in scope for this. If it's a common, say off the shelf application, we likely have an out of the box connector for it. They're very much uh, plug and play. Uh, as an example, I always you know, joke about, it was a time where I was driving and a you know new customer called me and said, hey, I need help connecting to Okta and Azure. And I walked him through connecting to Okta and Azure while on the phone, while driving without being able to see a screen. So they're, they can be very easy to plug in. And though out of the box connectors are great, you know, we'll never have an out of the box connector for every single application or endpoint that we're gonna be reviewing. And you don't really intend to because we have what's called a flex connector. So this flex connector is a coin thing to secure ends. This is a one size fits all, if you will. And so this is what I mean by the time to value and rethinking how we consume data and doing implementation. So instead of building an individual custom connector for every single endpoint, which typically would take a lot of dollars and manpower and time to do, we use the flex connector. And essentially what we do is we look at the endpoint and say, hey, what is the best route to pull the data from this endpoint? So can we, extract from a database, for instance? Can we configure a table or paste a query? Can we expose an API or write a script? Or can we drop things into an, F, uh, an SFTP and have secure ends run a script to pull that into the platform or even upload files directly? So we have stuff that's not, you know, typically in scope, but we want to do things like I have a customer that wanted to review their physical access. They have, you know, a number of newly remote employees, as I'm sure you can imagine, that were not remote eight months ago. And they wanted to do a review on all of the you know, Bluetooth devices and webcams that they had deployed. So they just uploaded that list. So it can, no matter how the data is being consumed, 
it can pull it will pull directly into secure ends and start matching it to that people list. So someone had a question, what about companies using uh, Salesforce, Okta, third party solutions? How do you how are you able to solve that? So same idea. So for for Salesforce, for instance, if we, we have an um, out of the box connector for Salesforce or for Okta, let's say if, if everything is governed by you know Okta or like Active Directory, then if we can see or if we can pull those groups directly from that application, then we can see everything here within Secure as that granular entitlement access or do both and connect uh, directly to the apps and to whatever we're using as the directory. So when it gets pulled into secure ends, this is where the AI ML matching takes place. So this is a uh, something that's commonly brushed over when I think uh, organizations are evaluating an IGA solution, but it seems to be a tremendously large use case that is you know being solved by saying, hey, no matter what the user ID is, the credential, their email address, first name, last name, uh, it's going to look for some kind of unique identifier. It's going to look for the path of least resistance. I've never met an organization that has a streamlined user ID across all endpoints. So that is okay. It's going to match where it can, and then it's going to use fuzzy logic to make suggestions for who this could be. So it could be because someone has a nickname in an application like Bob instead of Robert, or it's a service account or an orphan account. Never done implementation without finding an orphan account, of course. So we'll be able to see that immediately. And once it's matched one time, it'll never have to be done again. So this is a, it's just a huge piece. I had a customer that was, you know, this matching process of the formatting, the massaging of the data, finding out who reports to who to send out these access reviews, finding out of, you know, this chase is the same chase that's inside of these five applications. It was a month long process that they were doing that they were having to do every quarter. So that's four months out of the year they were doing this and never has to be done again. Um, the specific company I'm talking about, the, the lady who was doing this task uh, actually started crying in the meeting when she's, when she's found that because it was such a, a high stress uh, task. So once that's done, it's never gonna have to be done again. And so then reviews can be configured to send out at whatever frequency we need to. So we're gonna do access certifications. Uh, they will be automatically uh, sent to whoever is responsible for reviewing that access. It can be delegated if need be, if someone's on say maternity leave, or we don't want our CEO doing an access certification. So that all that can be automated once you set it up. And all of the communication reminders, following up, making sure people actually do this will be automated. Escalations will be automated. We know who those users, the managers are, it's inside the system of records. So it's, it's automating all this for you and keeping track of what's left. Now, at the end of an access review, all the changes that need to be made will configure to whatever ticketing system the customer is using. I have ServiceNow and Jira here as examples, what we see most common. It will automatically generate a ticket or an email with the report of whoever, of all the changes that need to be made to whoever is responsible for making those changes. Now, once those changes are made, the review is complete, we've reached 100%, and the tickets have gone out. It's actually going to be pulling the data again at whatever frequency we've chosen to say, hey, this is uh, it's going to reconcile this of all the changes that needed to be made as a result of this review. This is what has actually been made. So you can you will be able to provide that attestation with a report to show, OK, we did the review. This is how we did it. These are all the changes. And this is the changes that were actually made. And all of the emails that would be associated with this will be recorded and audited. So we're not taking screenshots and storing them. And then all of the audit reports will be automatically generated. We'll get into the reports in just a moment. But the next slide, I want to touch on the matching piece, like I talked about. So the whole point of this is to create transparency. So we want to be completely transparent, not only as an organization, but also how we're utilizing the product, being able to see Chase, what all does Chase have access to. And so once this is matched, I'll be able to see this in real time where I can pull this report. So it's going to end up looking a little bit like this. So I can dive down into my applications or my entitlements or my domain admins or my an individual employee. I have this as an example. So what does Kirk have access to? Kirk has access to all of these endpoints within each endpoint. I can see all the entitlements, the groups, the roles, the permissions, the privileges that this person has within each application. So if I can see it through Okta as a group or an application, and I can see those applications directly. So 
this is a key piece here. So a, a great example of this was I had a customer that was a, um, well, a, now a customer at the time they were not, um, we were in a conversation and they were a construction organization and they had just won their largest bid, uh, the, so to, for the job. And so they were excited about it and they had capitalized a little bit and, but they actually said it kind of slipped. They were like, yeah, we only won it by, you know, $500,000 is what we want it by. And typically, a, you know, a job this size, we'd probably, if we were going to win, the gap would be around, you know, a few million dollars. So we thought that was a little weird. So we said, hey, you know what? Let's uh, let's throw this into a POC, a sandbox instance. So they actually connected to their system of record, connected to Box. And what they found out was, this is during a POC. So what they found out was there was a person that no longer worked at the organization that, now worked at the competitor's organization that they barely beat. And that person still had access to Box. So that same Box where they were storing a lot of the files and where they were working on this particular bid. So I could see that in real time uh, right then and there. So that was extremely powerful. So that person's, you know, of course, that company's moving forward and they're utilizing Securance now. But just being able to see this in real time. Same thing with um, if someone leaves the organization. This is another real life example. It was a 30,000. This happened in March. 30,000 employee company that actually already signed with Securance, 30,000 employee company that became a 25,000 employee company overnight and due to COVID, unfortunately. And they wanted, that was their first use case before they did their first user access to review this. And I want to see if there's anyone in my organization that has access to anything that's, if that is inactive and the number was high. <laughs> so we saw that immediately. And a lot of them predated COVID by, you know, a few years. So, uh, extremely powerful being able to see this mind map, see everything in one pane of glass. Now, when we talk about setting up reviews, access certifications. So we understand that every organizations review different things in different ways by different people at different frequencies. So we work off of templates. And so we build these templates to show exactly that. I want to define this by my privileged access. I want to define this by my you know financially significant groups or roles or applications. And once that is defined and is sent out, all the communication is automated. And again, we wanted to make this as easy as possible for a uh, user to be able to utilize this without having to do certifications or even get direct training, right? We want them to be able to walk through it. And this is kind of what the, the portal will look like. So they will log in, they'll see their users, they can view it by a particular user, they can do it, view it by a particular app or a particular entitlement. I just want to see everyone has access to this entitlement. What we see most popular is that managers want to see your managers are reviewing the direct reports. And if I click into a particular user, I would see something along the lines of this, where I see what applications do they have access to? What endpoints do they have access to? What entitlements, what is their credential? What is their entitlements for each one? If they happen to have one, you'll say one. If there's multiple, it'll say entitlement, entitlement, entitlement going down. And if they have no idea what this entitlement means, there'll be a meaningful description of that entitlement. And then moving into here, we'll notice there's a risk score. It's another piece of the AI ML analytics, another piece of accountability. It's actually going to compare the data. Like I mentioned earlier, who are our peers in the AI ML analytics? So who are our peers who has like uh, minded, you know, titles or locations or departments? If I have 200 revenue analysts in the finance department in Minneapolis and only three of them have this particular entitlement, well, they're going to be considered an outlier and their risk score is going to go higher. And so they can actually click into it to see why. And then if they need to approve it for whatever reason, they could leave a note as to justify it. And that note is not only going to be on the audit report that's generated, it's going to be on the ticket that gets generated as well. So it's every, it's, it's all transparent. So we worked with Deloitte for, quite some time, um, about 18 months or so to iron out a reporting module so that we would really meet any compliance standard we'd ever come across when it comes to access certification, right? So, you know, HIPAA, SOC, SOC, PCI, GDPR, CCPA, you name it, high trust. And they all look very similar. And, and I have a case study that we did with one of the world's largest airport logistics organizations where they actually were, were able to save 60% on their audit spend in the first year using secure ends because the auditors can actually have an auditor login where they just have access to the auditor tab. They can go in and filter out what is needed. So we're not having to fish and look for reports. So 
I'm glad you asked that. So the uh, Tom, I'll come back to that in just a moment about the the flex connector with the internal developed applications. And the answer is yes, we will come back. So everything is fully transparent, and the reports will show they're all very similar. But it's going to have the person's campaign name, their or the sorry, the campaign name, the person's first name, their last name, their email, their manager, who was the reviewer, what was reviewed, what happened in the review, the date that it was reviewed who, you know, what was the credential permission those review, any notes associated? And then what was that ticket ID that was generated as well? So everything is all encompassing. So it's there, we stand it up. We're not having to go through an extensive amount of implementation to pull this all together. And you are able to manage the end to end. Now I'm going to, it may seem like a different order here, but I'm going to show you, you know, some of the ideas of some of the customers that are using something like this. So, it's really industry agnostic. So across any company size or industry, we've got a, you know, some of the largest banks in the United States to, you know, some of uh, 125 employee nonprofit, you know, it's just uh, across the board. And what you'll see is some of these organizations are actually getting rid of the traditional sense of an IGA solution. They've, they've used it or sorry, attempted to implement it and have, you know, backed away and said, Hey, you know, this is, let's, step back and then say, maybe we have everything we need inside of Okta and Securance and are moving towards that solution. So, uh, and even in tandem with people who are utilizing a, you know, large or implementing something and then running it in tandem and getting to access certification now until that happens. So I saw John and just popped up now. John, do you have a question? No, sir. No question. Um, just prepping for the Q and A as we're coming up close to the time frame there. Sure. So, last piece. I'll cut man. Time flies. You know, uh, <laughs> what I'm talking here. So, but yeah. So, uh, lastly, is you know the use case. Like, how do we work well with Octa? We have, we you know we have a great marriage with Octa. There's no overlapping values, uh, and that's you know one of the reasons. Just like I said, we you know we wanted to partner with companies like Octa and companies like Alchemy. Uh, you know qualifying the customer, understanding their actual needs, and then figuring out what the best route to do what they uh, you know, need to do. And so um, traditionally what we would see and how it could marry really well with Okta with the customer would be saying, let's say that they have tied their HRES system. We'll use Workday as an example to Okta. They're using it for SSO MFA, some access provisioning into these different applications. And then what about uh, requesting access? And what about requesting access to things that are not you know, Okta driven or, or governed. And so, yes, you can request access to these maybe in-house developed applications, custom applications, have an approval workflow so that there's different levels of approval if, they're, if there's needed for certain groups or apps or people or departments, whatever that may be. And so that we can design a ticketing workflow to do that and then do certify the access of all of the endpoints um, outside of the lifecycle management piece. So. I'll, uh, I'll open it back up. For, I know we got five minutes and uh, got a lot of presenters, so I'll start answering some of these questions. So uh, I could start with, uh, so Tom asked, I, told, I promised you I'd come back to it, but so going back to the flex connector, Tom. So the this is what the flex connector allows is for us to, if it's an internally developed application, we just figure out what is the best route to pull that data. You know, is there a database we can extract from? Uh, is there an API that can be exposed? I had, so uh, really cool. There was a, um, and I know those are pre-submitted questions uh, to this too. So I'll kind of, you know, touch on this, but using an SFTP has become extremely popular. Um, I have a customer that had 11 applications in scope. Some of them were in-house developed and some of them were legacy financial applications and all they could get was raw data. <laughs> and it was, uh, it took a very long time to massage it, put it into Excel's and, you know, break it apart, do all the matching. And so what we did was just say, hey, you know what, let's just set up a portal. You drop those that raw data in there. And once we understand what it is we need, we just write a script to pull from that portal into Securance. So hey Austin, just real quick, just for the benefit of the rest of the audience, because I don't know if they can see all the questions, but um, what you were answering there is, uh, can the app be used with uh, internal developed apps? Um, and then how are you licensed? So I just want to make sure everyone knew what the actual question was. Um, and then I'm going to kick out the poll and then I'm going to go to the last couple of questions as well. So I'll do that for the audience um, since we're buttoned up on the time. Um, so let me go ahead and kick that out. 
should be out there. Um, and then, you know, one of the other questions I see there, uh, are you checking last log on access for users and comparing if that user is active in the HRIS, HRIS system to determine if that account should be removed? Yeah, great question. So uh, yes, so we are, we can actually pull pretty much any attribute. So uh, sorry, my video is a little bit behind me there, so it got me. But uh, but yeah, so we can pull pretty much any attribute. So if, if last log on, we can pull that expiration dates if there's if like contractors that you know only need to have access for a certain amount of time, and we could do reviews that are triggered based off of that. Someone hits that 90 day mark, for instance, <clears> mark, you know we need to review their access so they reach that mark. It can all automatically trigger a review to say, hey, does this person still need access? So we can eliminate those license costs, for instance. Yeah. Okay, cool. And then one of the pre-submitted questions that you were talking about um, was around the flex connectors. Um, the question was, you know, what type of skill set is needed for those flex connectors for ones I may need or ones that aren't already in your pre-built catalog? Yeah, absolutely. So going back to the, you know, the utilization strategy, not having to have an, you know, an engineering background or a certification to use SecureInz, uh, we if you are utilizing the flex connector, the most popular way that people do it is a database extraction, of course. So um, as long as you know you have someone that you know can ensure that the data is inside of a table and we can write a query to do so, then we can start pulling that data. Or if there's an API driven, if we can you know configure an API. Okay. And then it looks like the last question out there, um, and, and I'll <laughs> I love this question. I love the integration with Okta that you talked about. And one of my worst fears has always been that some access gets disabled and you kind of talked about that. So if imagine in the example with Chase, if his account didn't get disabled, but his ability to do MFA was removed, right? And there wasn't an identity governance solution with, with periodic reviews. So in essence, what I'm describing is he still has access, but there's no MFA to protect that. So that I think that's a very powerful thing for the, um, you know, for the governance side, because you're going to continue to do those periodic checks. You see that analytics and stuff like that. So, um, but the question that came in was around Okta use case and integration that you showed. Um, and it, the question is, is there a cost and what does the implementation of that integration look like? Yeah. So whenever we, and I'll, I'll answer this question and the, and uh, part of uh, someone else's question earlier. So around cost and, and what does the integration look like? So the integration into Okta is, Actually, quite simple. It's a, a domain and an access token. So, if you, as long as we, you know, we can have that one client secret. But it's uh, again, like I said, I've I've done it while driving. So it takes a few minutes, and we've actually done it, you know, right before a a, a joint Octa Securance demo where I connected to the salesperson's demo instance. So we had both of our demo codes connected to each other. Uh, so that integration is 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 very very simple. And now the the fees for implementation and the fees for uh, the actual license fee. So the way we license it is based off of the module that we're getting secure, uh, the credential entitlement management, the core of who we are. That's, you know, you can't have anything else with without that. But depending on the module and the number of identities that will be housed within the Securance platform. So um, that is human identities. So if Chase has access to 10 applications. He's still one human Chase. If he has seven credentials in one application, he's still one human chase. And uh, this is excluding service accounts. We're only talking about human accounts. So it's a per identity per month fee invoiced annually. So it's kind of similar to what you would probably would expect with Okta. And then as far as implementation goes, it is a it's a per connector fee. We usually charge, it's, it's usually a percentage depending on how much discovery is needed for the data uh, and how you know modern we've, we've become and how much we're tied to the cloud. But it's a, usually a percentage of the license fee and then the connector fee. So you have a one-time connector fee for each connector that we're utilizing. This is important because if you get new versions or you need troubleshooting and things like that, you paid for the connector. So you have that for life. So that is your connector you've already paid for. And then you know, what's important about it is say if we're using a flex connector, the beauty of it is you can use one flex connector for multiple Extractions. So the same example I used, where someone had eleven endpoints, those pull into one FFTP. Mm -hmm. We have one flex connector. So one flex connector for eleven applications. Gotcha. Perfect. Yeah. Um, so I just took a quick look. I think that um, that answers all of the current questions that we have. So, um, yep. Prize time. So we're going to give away another prize. <laughs> um,